this video, we're going to start working with forms as well as working with using an external JavaScript file. The most important thing that I can teach you about programming is that you have to test frequently. If you don't, when you get to the end of your program and it doesn't work, you won't know why. You'll be frustrated. You'll be ready to pick up your computer and throw it through the window. Trust me, I've been there. So I'd like to walk you through how I program. I have my HTML done, and there's a link to it um, in the classroom, so you can just copy and paste this HTML. You don't have to recreate it. I do also have a basic CSS file I've been using through the whole chapter. You can copy and paste this. It'll work without it. I just like an Arial or a sans serif font, and that's really all I'm doing, plus aligning my H1 tag. But let's take a quick look at what the HTML file looks like. It's a painting cost estimator. If you took the applied logic class here before this, it should look familiar. We're going to get the room one length, room one width, room one height, and then it'll calculate the painting cost when you hit submit. It's still linking to my old JavaScript file where I had it working because I have not saved this yet. You gotta make sure to save everything. And if I preview this and hit submit, it doesn't work. Okay, I did obviously test this before I had you look at it. All right, we're going to take a quick look at the finished JavaScript file, which I have called painting.js. I've got this one up on my website as well, so you guys can take a look at it. We go, we're going to declare how we're getting our function with this um, dollar sign as our um, variable. We're going to have a calculate cost function that will accept length, width, and height. We'll check to see if everything entered by the user is a number. And we will make it work with the onload function. But let's go through this one at a time, and I'll show you how I program it. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to always check the connectivity between your HTML file, which is looking for painting.js, and I have this saved here as painting.js, and we just want it to, we just want to make sure that it will actually run when we call the program. So I always test with an alert statement. Just alert. I'm working. Make sure to save your file. And usually, if it's something that launches right away, it will refresh right here. Otherwise, you may find that you have to close your preview and then relaunch it for it to test properly. So we can see that we've got connectivity between the HTML file and the JavaScript file. That's a good place to start. Then I'm going to put in my basic line that will get um, the ID from the HTML and use them. And that line is variable, and we're going to use the dollar sign, equals function, and we're going to receive ID. Anything in parentheses means that it's being passed. What that what I like to do next is I like my opening and closing brackets on different lines because it's easy to match up to make sure that they line up. And we're going to have a return statement, document, which is the HTML document, dot get element by ID. And the ID name is ID. And then make sure you close that with a semicolon and save it. Now this isn't going to do anything at this point, so there's no real reason to test it. But I do want you to see where I'm using the ID in the HTML program. For each one of these form fields, I have an input type of text with an ID, room one length, room two length. It's a unique identifier for the element. So that's the ID that it's getting. Let's go back to the JavaScript file. The next thing that we want to test is our onload function. So you're going to type in window onload equals function, 
And we're not going to pass this on anything, so it's just opening and closing, closing parentheses. And again, I like to put in my opening and closing brackets. And we're just going to, again, test this with an alert here. And I just like to say what function I'm in, which is on load. And if we see that when we save it, we know it's working. So we're going to go ahead and save it. Okay, we didn't see it. We'll go in and test the HTML. We'll see it then. If, it did, if I did it right, there we go. That's working perfectly. So we know we don't have any typos in this window onload function. So the next thing I want to do is I want to just create an empty shell for our other function, which I'm going to call calculate cost. So that will be a var calculate underscore cost equals function. And we don't pass it anything, so those parentheses are empty. And then I put in my blank lines. And in here, again, I will have an alert. And I will have the alert say, calculate cost, so that I know I'm inside of that function. Now, I'm going to test this. Well, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. On load works. But nothing happens here because I'm... The onload function means that the page has loaded, it automatically co calls this. But nothing is calling this yet. So we need to put in a statement in our onload function to call calculate cost, just to test that that's going to work. So we're going to, and since we know this one's working, I can either comment that out or get rid of the alert. And then I'm going to put in a calculate underscore cost with the open and close parentheses to call the function. I'm going to have to save my JavaScript. And you'll notice it did call it right away because that page was loaded right here. So we know that this function is talking the next function. OK, let's actually start working on these functions then. We want to change this so that it works with the submit button instead of calling automatically. So the next thing we're going to do is put in the dollar sign and submit because submit is the ID for our submit button. And we're going to type on click because that's the action that's going to, or the event that's going to trigger this to work. And that's going to call calculate underscore cost. Notice this time I'm not putting in the parentheses because I'm doing this on the click of a button. So I'm going to save this. Nothing should happen because we actually have to do something to call it. I'm going to hit submit and the calculate cost is working. So now we actually have to get into some of the program itself, some of the actual basically the meat of the program. We know we're getting into the calculate cost function. So I like to just test my variables in the next step. I'm going to have a variable for length. And I'm going to set it equal to 10. A variable for width, which I'll set equal to 15. And a variable for height, which I'll set equal to 9. And then I'm going to have a variable for total, which I'm going to set equal to 10. I'm sorry, not 10. I want to use the variables. Length times height times 2. And this is because the walls, I'm assuming, are rectangular room. So this will give me the area of the long walls. And then we're going to add it to width times height times 2. That gives me the area of the width of the room. So that's all four walls there. And then I'm going to multiply this by 0.5 to represent 50 cents, how much we would be charging for painting per room. Times 0.5 because it's, oops, and then we put in our semicolon. And I often like to put a little comment in here, 50 cents per square foot. 
Okay, now what should happen is that is nothing because it'll do the calculation but won't show it to us. So let's just put in an alert total. Now we can test it. So we're going to save. We're going to go into here and we're just going to hit submit. We have a problem. That's not good. Let's try closing this. Oops, look, we've got our, an error right here. Unexpected token. Okay, length times height times 2, width times height times 2. Oh, uh, there's a space after my point and before my 5. See how it underlined the error for me? This is one of the reasons that I really like Optana is because it does a lot of error checking for me. Let's try that again. Let's preview it and submit. There we go. So that's working. Okay, now let's actually take it the next step and let's try working with the form on our HTML page. Let's try and add that total once it's calculated to the form. So that's going to be painting cost which is the name of that element, the ID of the element, dot value, we're going to change the value of that form field, equals total. Let's save it. Let's see if that works. Yep, that's awesome. Okay, so we're going to now work with getting our variables in from the program instead of using them here. So to do that, we're going to have to change them because they come in as a text string, so we're going to have to change them to a float, which is just a number that allows for a decimal point. So again, we're pointing to the ID of room one length dot value and the parse float will take it from a string into a number value, so that means that we can actually do some math with it. Parse float dollar sign quote room one width dot value and a parse float room one height dot value. Now that's going to let us, if we save, we should be able to go in here and enter numbers 10, 15, 14, 9, submit, and it gives us a painting cost. Now I want to check and make sure it will actually work with some decimal points. Point 34, point 2, point 5, and we get that, and I want to see if we kept going here. I'm going to want to make this always around to two decimal places. So let's take a quick look at that. So in here, oops, I just shut it. Luckily, I always save it to test it. So I want to change my total value to equal itself to a fixed value of two decimal places. This will make it cut off. So if I go into here, and we'll just put in some random numbers, 21.222, 10 and hit submit and we'll automatically cut that down to two numbers. Now I'm also going to want to show the dollar sign in front of it. So let's say here we're going to have the, oops, we've got to be in the JavaScript. So here we're going to have it equal quote, dollar sign, 
space, quote, plus total. And let's try that again. Not a really realistic room, but I am seeing my dollar sign with a space, which is how I want that to appear. All right, we're pretty much done. I do want to add just one more thing. I'm going to use an if statement to check just to make sure that people are actually putting numbers in. So here, after I do these, where I'm actually getting the, them and assigning them to a variable, I'm going to do an if statement. And I'm going to check if for something is not a number, and I want to see if length is not a number, or, and the or is the pipe symbol, twice, again is not a number, and this time we're going to check width, or is not a number, height. If any one of those is not a number, I want an alert to go up. So whatever happens after the if in the brackets will happen. Alert. You have an invalid value. Correct. And click submit. Otherwise, we're going to do an else. We'll just finish the program that we already wrote. And so you may notice here, every time I make a change in a line, it's showing green until I save it. Once I save it, that goes away. That shows you the changes you've made since the last time you've saved. So now, my program should be complete, and I should be able to put in 12.3, 23 .2, 9.5, hit Submit, and it works. And if I have something left blank here, I should get you have an invalid value. So that is very similar to your first homework assignment, and you want to go through those steps of checking after each thing that you enter to make sure that the program is really working.